Hello and welcome to the first video of how to teach New Concept English. My name is Michael Murphy. Uh, I am uh, based in China. Uh, New Concept English is a uh, four book uh, curriculum on teaching English to a level of a uh, C1, C2. Um, I have been here for 11 years and uh, I have worked with uh, international high schools. I have worked with colleges, uh, uh, about uh, 35 colleges uh, uh, throughout China, uh, Sichuan province, uh, Beijing, Guangzhou, uh, Zhuhai, Shenzhen, uh, Zhengzhou, which I'm based out of Zhengzhou is where I live. And um, we've been able to teach uh, students uh, that have gone on and uh, achieved uh, super high scores on the SAT, the IELTS exam, and TOEFL exams. And uh, our average score for our SAT student is about uh, 1530 for the entire exam, uh, which is which really translates to about 730 on the English part of the SAT exam. Our average TOEFL student will score uh, about 110 out of 120 points, and uh, our average um, uh, IELTS uh, student will uh, score a, a band uh, 8 or better. Um, we've been very successful uh, in China teaching students to a level of fluency in English to a C1 and, and oftentimes a C2 level, uh, if you're familiar with the CEFR uh, standards, the, the different levels. Um, uh, we've taught students to fluency. Uh, we've been able to assist students not only in teaching them English, but in uh, applying to various universities in America, uh, in the UK, and also in Australia, uh, a few other places as well. Uh, Spain, we had a student a few years ago that went to Barcelona, Spain. Uh, that was in an English school there. And uh, we've been able to put students uh, in uh, Harvard. Uh, we put two students at Yale. Uh, we put a student at uh, University of um, Chicago in America. Uh, we've been able to put students in uh, uh, Stanford University, uh, University of California, LA, University of California at Irvine. Um, uh, University of Toronto in Canada. We've been very, very successful in teaching students to a level of English fluency. And uh, when I first came to China, I really did not like the New Concept English book because I was looking in the schools and I was seeing what was going on in the schools. And I had the opportunity to observe uh, 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 several dozen teachers who were teaching this this uh, series of books in the school, uh, in the schools here, and uh, I didn't like what I saw because I didn't see them getting the results that they should have been getting, and I uh, later found out why. I'll talk more about that later on, but uh, first of all, I just want to give you an introduction to myself and to New Concept English, and the reason that I am uh, doing these vid this series of videos is for actually for teachers who use the new concept the the four volumes of the new concept English books uh, and uh, in being able to teach it in a highly effective way uh, generally it's not taught in a highly effective way from what I have observed and um, uh, because uh, many of the principles that uh, the author L.G. Alexander uh, laid out in the, in the books and in the introduction to the first book, uh, a lot of the principles that he laid out are simply not followed. Uh, New Concept English has become a book where most teachers take it and they teach gr a grammar-based uh, approach to language learning. And uh, we know that this is not the most effective, it's not the most natural, uh, and uh, it's, uh, uh, it's just highly difficult to go that route in any type of language learning, to, to go what we call the grammar route. Uh, if you go strictly with grammar, uh, grammar is important, grammar is very important, and it's important that you learn grammar, 
at the right time. But there has to be a foundation that's built first. We'll talk more about that later. Right now, let's just uh, let me introduce uh, this uh, uh, series of, of books on New Concept English. Um, it was written by L.G. Alexander, uh, who is a, uh, uh, was a British author and a British uh, teacher. Um, it's, it's been very popular in, in China. It was first published on October 30th of 1967, and then they revised the book in 1997. Uh, the course consists of uh, four components, a student's book, teacher's book. And of course, this is, this is a very old idea here a set of cassettes. Today it's on a, I think you could still get it on a CD, uh, but uh, uh, you can also find it a lot of other places as well uh, online in MP, MP3 format. Uh, then they say another set of cassettes on repetition drill in the teacher's book has also been recorded. So uh, New Concept uh, English uh, has been described as a breath of fresh air in which the author L.G. Alexander utilized a syllabus as a foundation for effective learning and organized the language in ways which students and their teachers found immensely stimulating. Um, as I said, I really opposed this uh, curriculum when, at, in the very beginning, but I had not taken the deep look at it that I needed to take. Once I did, I found it to be uh, scientifically laid out. It's a building block, what we call a building block method. Uh, it, 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 even vocabulary and grammar and everything, it starts with the elementary uh, uh, grammar in the beginning and elementary and the, the most frequently used words in English in the very beginning. And it builds on that. It gives it, even even though at the time that he wrote this, what's known as SRS, which is Space Repetition System, uh, if you use Anki or if you use um, Quizlet or something like this, uh, Memorize I think does this. There's some others that that uh, use a SRS, a Space Repetition uh, uh, System, which is based on the. Uh, if you're familiar with it, it's based on the Ebbinghaus um, uh, curve. Uh, of forgetting and uh, basically what it says is is that if I sit down right now and I'm constantly you know I learn a new word let's let's say that I'm learning Chinese and I'm saying uh, I am a teacher uh, the way you say that in, in Chinese wa which is I uh, sure which is am uh, lao sure which is teacher uh, the old idea is I could sit here and so how many times could I say that uh, before I'm going to remember it, you know, and I have just kind of a mindless repetition. Well, sure, lao sure, well, sure, lao sure. I am a teacher. I am a teacher. I am a teacher. I am a teacher. Uh, does that work? Yes, it'll work. And it'll be very, very boring. And it's going to take you a very long time to learn that way. But when you space it out, uh, what he, what um, Ebbinghaus taught, uh, he taught that uh, there is a forgetting curve. Uh, there's a there is a point at which you're about to 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 lose what you've learned, and then you review. So it's a spaced review system. It's called spaced repeta a repetition, but it's a spaced review system, and that's a much better way to approach learning any language. And uh, New Concept English does a, is a fantastic resource uh, to do that by the lessons that they give. For instance, here we see in the, in the first book, which is called Book One, First Things First, the introductory has 144 lessons, 72 which are for exercises. So half of the, half of the, the, the book are exercises where you're actually doing something with the language. That's the most important part. Uh, you know, mindless repetition is just very ineffective and very inefficient. Uh, but uh, uh, when you use this book the right way, uh, it can be a very, very, it is a very, very powerful tool as we've proven here in China. Uh, book two has 96 lessons. Uh, book three, uh, Developing Skills, uh, has 60 more lessons. And then book four uh, has 60 more lessons in it. Um, as I said, the books uh, was originally uh, 
published on uh, October 30th, 1967. In China, this book became the number one bestseller in history. Uh, you know, now I don't know how that stacks up to the uh, uh, Analects of Confucius and some of the other books that have been uh, the the uh, the the book that Mao Zedong wrote, the Red Book. I don't know how it stacks up against that. But as far as a textbook, this book uh, has sold more copies than any any book in in history, uh, any textbook in history. Let me say it that way. So what we're going to do is uh, we're about 10 minutes into this video and all I want to do is really talk about just just where the book came from. L.G. Alexander, as you're going to find out, as I'm teaching you how to teach New Concept English, L.G. Alexander really, uh, this is a masterpiece in what he was able to do. It's simple, but it's what we call the building block method. Uh, which is important for language acquisition. Uh, a lot of people say, well, you learn a language, but we find out uh, Dr. Stephen Croshan and others uh, have written about, uh, Dr. Croshan wrote in his book called The Natural Approach to Language Learning. And uh, uh, it's, it's, it's really not about sitting down trying to memorize things. It's about acquisition. That's the natural approach to learning. And then let me just, before I finish this video, let me just talk about a few things here about, there's four parts to learning any language. And that is uh, speaking, listening, uh, speaking, listening, reading, and writing, okay? Um, uh, listening and reading are, is input. Those two are input uh, uh, into, your, into your brain. Uh, uh, writing and speaking is output. You're speaking out, you're writing, that's output. Um, the natural approach, and I'm, I'm a huge fan of Dr. Stephen Croshan. Uh, you'll also find um, uh, Steve, I can't think of his last name right now, but Steve, uh, he has a, a link, um, a, a Canadian guy that's a... Uh, uh, that is a polyglot on, on YouTube. You can find him quite a, L I N G Q is the name of his program. So I'll give a little, a little promotion there, uh, to him, uh, even though I can't remember his, his, uh, last name. Uh, but, uh, he's Stephen also. But anyway, what they, what they talk about and what, what I think any linguist and any language learning expert in the world or our professor, our teacher that is really doing a uh, doing a, a true service to their students, uh, they understand language acquisition versus language learning. Uh, la language learning, like I said, is mindless repetition. Uh, language acquisition is a much different thing. Our brains are are conditioned. Uh, throughout, you know, hundreds, maybe thousands of years, our brains are conditioned to learn language, uh, uh, first of all, by listening. You th let's, let's just start with a baby. What's a baby do? A baby spends, you know, two years just simply listening to, to their mother, to their father, to those that are in their environment. They spend, you know, approximately two years in that environment and then they start uttering sounds that are unintelligible sounds and they're trying to talk and their brain what their what their brain's doing it's developing it's unfolding and it's it's a it's a process that you go through when you naturally learn a language this is how we're set up uh this is how we're set up in language learning this is how we as human beings are set up we hear, we hear, we hear. That's the listening part of the four parts of language learning. Then output. We start giving output. We attempt it by making sounds uh, that are, like I said, unintelligible sounds. Finally, they become intelligible sounds, and we build on that. That's the natural approach. Then when a child is about six or seven years old, what they do is uh, we put them in school. And then they start learning things like grammar and things like that. Now, uh, in China, uh, grammar as a, as a uh, discipline, as a science, really is not uh, taught in 
school. They don't teach grammar rules. Let me put it that way. They don't teach grammar rules uh, as we do in English. But what we find out is that once we've got a foundation of maybe uh, 1,000 or 1,500 words as a child, then we go to school and we start learning more and more about the language. But no formal learning has taken place up until that time. Now, this is one thing that I tell teachers all the time here in China, Chinese English teachers, I tell them all the time, and that is that, that if the parents did not build that foundation, if the child had no exposure to language those first six years, once they got to school, it would be a disaster. The teacher could do nothing. So the teacher is dependent upon the parents for those first six years of a child's life to give them a foundation, and the foundation is based on two parts of the four parts of learning a language, and that is listening and speaking. Listening they do naturally, speaking they do naturally. They, they will do that naturally, even though the parent will spend time teaching the child words. Um, uh, one day I was walking through a park here next to, I live next to a uh, famous river in China and um, uh, I was walking in the uh, the riverside park there and I saw what appeared to be a grandfather with his grandson on his lap and the grandson's facing him and he's watching grandpa's mouth. And I, I, I'm going to talk more about this later, but he's watching grandpa's mouth as grandpa's telling him how to say hello, of course, in Chinese, ni hao, ni hao, ni hao. And this, this child's put, even putting his hands on grandpa's mouth, you know, and feeling of him. And then the child begins to do the same thing that the, the grandfather does, okay? So in the beginning, language is built on this foundation of hearing something from parents and the environment that a child is in, that a baby is in, and then they later go to school and they learn more and more about the language and they begin to learn, uh, you know, why a sentence is structured the way that it is. They already know how the, they already know how the sentence is structured because they know how to, they know how to talk. You know, they can say, I am a child. They can say, I am six years old. They can say, uh, I am a student. They can say, uh, I'm having fun. They can say those things by the time they're six or seven years old, then we go to school and we find out why we speak the way that we do. We find out the grammar rules that are involved. We don't learn grammar first. That's my point here. We do not learn grammar first. Any language program that starts with grammar first is, you know, can you do that? You can. But you've got a long, hard, difficult road if you go at language learning that way. It needs to happen, as Dr. Crossan says in his book, it needs to happen in a natural way. He calls it the natural approach to language learning. So this is what New Concept English was based on long before even Dr. Crossan said these uh, uh, very, very uh, vital uh, words and and has has taught his whole concept. If you know who Dr. Stephen Crossan is, um, of uh, comprehensible input, we'll talk more about those things later. Right now, we're going to use New Concept English to follow the natural approach to language learning. So, if you've not subscribed to my channel, please do so. Uh, if you've not liked the video, if you do like the video, and you've not. Uh, click like on it. I'll ask you to please do that as well. Um, but join us. You can turn on the notification bell. You can click on that, turn on the notification bell, and you'll see as I add more and more videos to this series. So we're going to keep each lesson down to about 20 minutes. We're 19 uh, and a half minutes into this one right now. So we're going to go ahead and wrap this up right now. But uh, what this video is, again, it's all about is how to teach new concept English uh, for uh, those that do not have English as their first language. Okay, join me and uh, let's get our minds set uh, that, uh, uh, that we're going to uh, learn a lot in this series. I'll see you next video.